The Great Debaters Contest is powered by Blaze by Safaricom, the Youth Network. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Great Debaters Contest. We're in Eldorate Region, and I am Austin Yumbok. The motion is genetically modified foods should be embraced to solve food insecurity in Kenya. Met K girls going against Kipsigak boys. Whoever will be the victor, we're yet to know. Proposal number one, you have three minutes. So, right now, as we all know that Kenya, that Kenya is undergoing a shortage of food. So, what are those kind of ways that, that we can say so that we can improve the, the food in Kenya so as to make the consumers more happy and put a smile to their face? So, my, my points are as follows. First of all, what do we understand by the, by the term genetically modified organisms? Gen genetically modified organisms or foods, these are foods that the, the, their genetic strands have been altered in such a way that their characteristics and behavior are not going to be the same as the parent, as the parent species, but of the same breed. I hope you have well understood. And examples of these genetically modified foods are examples of, of corn, soya, canola, and sugar beef, which are mostly found in Northern America. So my first point goes that, it leads to production of stronger crops. As we all know that in Kenya, there, is, there are those foods that are not well equipped to withstand the temperatures or high temperatures or low temperatures in the country. So with this type of foods, this, we can say that these foods can withstand high temperatures which are found in the northeastern part of Kenya and even to the highlands like we have here in Nandi County. So it can, be, it can act in many ways. They, it can stay in many areas in which it can prosper and withstand this, these abilities and provide su sufficient yields and quality. This, my second point is that it, it, has, it is high in nutrition value because some, as we know, that some of the foods in Kenya, not most of them are nutritious. So you can hear, you will find some people complaining that the foods, they're not nutritious, they should, go to, they should be added some, some of the of, the, of, of those chemicals which enable the body to grow and develop more properly. So it, according to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, it has stated that these foods have been engineered that such, in such a way that if it lacks, more, let's say for example, vitamins and minerals, they can be equipped in which they will come and satisfy, satisfy the consumers who undergo malnutrition diseases and deficiency in which they will it will put a happy face on onto this they will put a happy smile onto their face thank you and to my third and last point which i have here is that the large that there will be large production that there will be large project, production in the in the in the kenya you know many farmers have complained that there are there are sufficient there are suf insufficient type of, let's say, seeds and those cereals that they should go and plant. So what we're saying here generally is that the production in which, let's say, they will, okay, I assume my point is well driven home and I, and I, I may now rest my case. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes to present your argument. Just two months ago, I lost two people that were so dear to me. May their souls rest in eternal peace. I lost my 82-year-old grandmother who drowned and sank in the who, who died who drowned in the river and died. And I also lost my nine-year-old brother who died of cancer, which was proven by the doctors that 60% possibilities is that the, that the cancer was caused because of excessive consumption of the genetically modified foods. What are the genetically modified foods? These are foods whose genetic structures have been structurally modified so as to enable them to grow faster and also to be, to be resistant to crop pests and diseases. What is food insecurity? Food insecurity is the condition where the food produced is less than the demand. I strongly stand before you today to oppose the genetic, genetically modified foods simply because this genetically modified foods is just but a sweet word to code the real meaning of poison. Genetically modified foods are poison to us simply because, first of all, they have advanced effects to our health. 
We are told that genetically modified food are able to produce, to naturally produce herbicides and pesticides so as to be able to make them to counter the effects of insects and pests, crop pests and insects. My dear Kenyans, is that point, does that point need someone to come and knock your head to make it think that we, while, con, con, while we eat this genetically modified food, it simply means that we are eating herbicides, Kenyans. We are eating herbicides and other food because this food can be able to produce the herbicides, meaning that when you consume them, then we are definitely consuming the herbicides. Also, it has been proven by Dr. John Comin, who is a professor in genetics, that these genetically modified food have the virus that whose effects are just similar to those of HIV AIDS and also the hepatitis B. Me and my friends are doing our best to keep ourselves safe from the HIV and AIDS by by keeping safe and also not doing what is not expected of us. My dear Kenyans, I'm not ready to die of a virus that is just similar to HIV AIDS while I kept myself safe just by promoting these genetically modified foods. Secondly, these genetically modified foods are sterile to mean that they cannot be planted in more than one season. As Kenyans, we are used to keeping some of the remaining of the grains so as to be able to plant them in the next year. But the genetically modified foods need the genetically modified seeds need to be brought each planting season. This simply means that it's going to be more expensive to us and it's not going to be of benefit to, of much benefit to us, but of benefit to the company since they, since they will be gaining more profit. My fellow Kenyans, I'm sure none of you is ready to bury your own son of a cancer that you help to nurture by promoting the genetically modified foods. So just join us and let's oppose the genetically modified foods. I'm Muhwana Chebukwa, opposing the motion, Metske Girls. Thank you. It's now time for rebuttals. May we have the second proposal? Take the stage. You have three minutes. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not coughing because of illness, but I'm coughing because I'm allergic with the words that the first opposer has said. This is because how can herbicides lead to death of their relatives? And he has also said that the herbicide that they took led to the death of their uh, relatives. That is not true. Because in Kenya here, we have Kenya Bureau of and Standards, CAPES, which actually sees on how the quality of the, of the commodities that are taken is safe. And so me, I don't know how they came into eating herbicides. And they know that from the, the, from the back of their mind that herbicides are uh, poisonous. So how can you take a poisonous commodity? That's a question that I'm posing to you. So back to, my, to the motion, I would like to propose this motion by saying that GMO food will bring to a production of pest resistant mechanisms in crops. This because the crops are not going to have that so much diseases that maybe these ordinary other crops have. This because they, according to the University of California in San Diego, a report states that they had they done a report which shows that genetically modified organs in, in food leads to the production of stronger crops, which in, in turn lead to the production of larger commodities or crops, which actually will bring to the growth of, of many uh, produce, which will solve food insecurity in Kenya. Or rather, we are, going, we are not going to suffer as, as Kenyans in depending on ordinary crops or foods, which are going to be affected by pests and diseases regularly. And we have an, another uh, developed ordinary food, which can be used and cannot also be attacked by pests and diseases more regularly. So my second point also goes that it leads to the decrease in use of pesticides. Because a research by scientists have shown that this genetically modified food ca cannot be altered or cannot, cannot lead to the use of many pesticides in order for them to sustain the environment that it is. Because when you take or develop here in Kenya, we are not going to suffer of any uh, food insecurity because no pest or cost that is going to affect the farmer or rather anything else that maybe the farmer, the young farmers can go undergo as a challenge. And so this will bring to the 
good maintenance of our food security, and all as Kenyans, we are going to enter, uh, we are going to be in a good condition, and we are not going to cry of another food disease. So I would like to urge my fellow opposers to cross the cross the floor and come to our side to promote this GMO in our country. For all that, I rest my case. I go by the name Amon Kipto, Kipsigaga High School. Opposition, you have three minutes to make your rebuttal. I had a dream for Kenya, that a time will come where Kenya will be able to provide food to sustain its population. But actually, if the food we, are we, are, we want to produce is meant to kill Kenyans day in, day out, and not in few numbers, in large numbers, you better tell us that you want to actually perform genocide on us instead of actually using good words that genetically modified foods are a solution to our problems, yet we know that this is killing ourselves day in, day out. I am actually surprised that you talked of genetically modified foods being strong crops that can withstand high temperatures. Why is it that you've not had people planting these genetically modified foods in the Chalbi and the Taru Desert? They are still deserts as they are, and yet you have confidence to come and prove to us that actually they are, they are adapted to harsh climatic conditions. You talked of higher nutritional value. May I remind you that your grandmother does not consume the cabbage that is genetically modified, but she feeds on the traditional food, that managu, that black, wheat, that, the, the, the black nitrate, and yet you're telling us that they are more nutritious. You just want to kill us all in the name of giving something so bad a good title. It is poison. Genetically modified foods are poison. And if you're ready to mislead Kenyans, if you want to die at the age of 45, as proved by Dr. Sona Pamar of the, in the column of of the Eve girl on the column of health that she said that actually genetically modified foods, if we consume them, each and every one of us is going to have a life expectancy of 55 years. I am not ready to die at the age of 55 years. I want to see my lineage. I want to see my grandchildren. I am not ready to die at the age of 45. If you want to die at the age of 45, die alone and do not perish with the rest of the Kenyans. Kenyans, it's time we took the truth as it is. The longer we live in denial, the more we perish. Genetically modified foods are poison. They contain herbicides. Come to think of it, take a good example of the Bt maize that contains Bacillus thuringiensis bacteria. That's in the size as a pesticide that is used to counteract the effect of insects. Yet you're telling us that you're not consuming pesticides. We are turning ourselves into insects. If you're an insect, consume genetically modified foods that are able to, pro to produce their own insecticides. But if you're a human being like I, be true to your roots like the sun. Be true to your roots like the flowers. Have you thought of why each and every time a Kenyan who plants genetically modified foods has to go back to the shop to buy new grains? The companies that are producing these seeds have their interest at heart. They, are, they want to make maximum profit. They are just concerned about controlling the food supply in the world. Take a very good example of the Monsota company that is the world's leading company that produces genetically modified foods. They produce sterile seeds. They produce patent seeds that force the consumer to go back to the shop each and every time they want to plant the seeds. It's high time we remain true to our roots. If you have a dream for Kenya, you will support me that actual genetically modified foods are meant to wipe Kenya out of the map of the world. I am a Kenyan, true to my roots. Be Kenyan, true to your roots. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. The opposition have been asked if genetically modified foods are sustainable, and the opposition have been asked if, why should somebody choose to die of hunger at nine years old, yet using gen genetically modified foods, they're assured of a lifespan of about 55 years. I now invite proposal number three to answer the questions. You say, a driver is driving a bus carrying 67 people, or 67 students, and there's a drunken man who is passing on the road, crossing the road. So, and there, when the driver will try to overlap and go outside the road, there is a valley. Do you think that uh, this, that driver will save, will save the, that only drunken man rather than saving 62? So, we are talking about GMO. Somebody has asked, 
it will it sustain the Kenyan people who are having food shortage? Yes, of course, because GMO foods are produced in large amount. If you see in the field of agriculture, if you use these, if you use these GMO foods like maize, our country is lacking now maize because people here, people here in Western region and even the, all the country are crying, unga unga. Why? Because there is food shortage, there is maize shortage. Millers are, are saying that the government has not given out from the stores, from their national stores, that they have not given out maize to be milled. So we can, if you use this GMO food, we will sustain our, our hunger in, in our country. And another one is that we can't starve to death and there is a food there. Yet let's say you have been given, there is water and juice. And this water, it has been given, it, is, it has a poison. And this juice, is, it, is a, it, it has a poison. But this juice has no more poison that will kill you right the, at that time. But, the, but water has poison, which, it has poison which, which is more poisonous that will kill you after five minutes. Will you drink the juice or will you drink the water? Because you are saying the water is good, is good and is natural. You can't say you are, eat, you are drinking water and, there's, and there is a juice which, which you can drink and survive for some time. Yes, of course. Another one is that diseases. Somebody has said that somebody is dying of cancer. This is because his grandmother or his grandfather is mixing. You can't use natural things and GMO food. This is because if you mix, all of, if you mix GMO food and, and natural, natural foods, this will cause some reaction of body hormones. That's causing that cancer that you're saying is causing. Another one is that to the cure to, of this cancer, we have our government has now empowered us, has now promote our health sector by buying the, those machines which, have, which, are, which deal with chemotherapy and radiotherapy, which, which tries to kill out this cancer. Another one is that government supports our people by giving them a chance to have a free, scan in, in free, free scanning of cancer in our public hospitals. And my point is that decrease in food prices, this is because if, if it was not the president, Mr. Huru Kenyatta, to say that unga to reduce to 90 shillings, the food price, if there, there was GMO food, this food price would not, not have gone at, as far as 150 shillings for a, 90, for a 2 kg unga. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes to answer your question. Dorothy Tobelimoy, Opposition. Thank you, Sharon, for asking your question. You asked, why should you die at nine years out of hunger while you can adopt the genetically modified food and die at 55? We are refusing the genetically modified foods because there are other methods that you can advocate for and that can enable you to die at 90 years. An example is by adapting land reclamation. Now, an example is Mwayatebere irrigation scheme, which feeds 80% of Kenya's population by the use of organic rice, not genetically modified rice. Now, another one is that Kenya should establish and implement laws that control the way people plant cash crops. In Kenya, 70% of the farmers grow cash crops and 30% grow food crop. Not forgetting the, the fact that, that that 30% of the people who are growing the food crop are small-scale farmers. Hence, we'll have insufficient food. But if we regulate the amount of cash crops that you are planting, we'll be able to have food in surplus. Now, don't you think it is very suspicious that you, the UK are not using genetically modified foods, yet they were the first country that used the genetically modified food, and yet here in Kenya you want to adopt the genetically modified food? Another one is that the country has slowly adapted to this system. This is because the Center of Disease Control and Prevention has proved that 23,000 of people die yearly out of consumption of genetically modified food. Now, it has not been adapted fully. 
What if it's adapted fully? More Kenyans will be dying. And Kenya is a developing country. Hence, we are not that mechanized so that we rely on technology that much than labor. Now, if we kill ourselves, how are we supposed to move from developing to developed? Now, the genetically modified foods are also expensive. In that, in 2000, they cost 2 million US dollars. In 2005, it, their cost was 6 million US dollars. And now, as we speak, in 2016, it was 16.5 million dollars. Kenya is a developing country. We depend on grants and aids. Now, why should we add more to our plates by adapting to the genetically modified foods while there are other alternatives that we can sort for so that we can, we, can, we, can, we can provide a solution to food insecurity? When the deal is too good, think twice. Thank you. Time for final submissions. Proposition, you have one minute. I, I would like to ask my first pro, my first opposer from from MedK girls. So, what is your current what 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 will be your alternative right now to to curb food insecurity in Kenya? Because for me, we have all tried all sorts of means. Right now, the president has has now gone to the extent of even going to to foreign countries to to go and buy maize in kilograms and to import into Kenya. Because because right now, we we know that. In, right now, we know that the prices have gone low. Many, many Africans are, are screaming and asking for where is this unga. And, right, uh, and I'm, I am sure right now, not many places have been, have been placed with this unga that you're saying that will pro provide food. And how many people have, di how many people have died have died in Kenya? Because I am sure that when it has reached your time, you know, in, in, in Kenya, the current state right now is that with the te advancing technology that we have, not many people are, a are able to reach 100 years. So when you're t if, if your time has reached, it has already reached. Because 90 it is a big achievement. Even in fact, you should say thank you. Thank you. Poses, you have one minute to make your final submission. To some point, I thought that actually the parable of the lost sheep only exists in the Bible. But I'm surprised that you have a lot of lost sheep in the house. I am a Kenyan and I have a dream for Kenya. And my dream for Kenya is not to kill Kenyans by giving them poison to feed them. I am a true Kenyan and my dream for Kenya is to see Kenya grow to greater heights by adopting other methods, natural methods, invention from ourselves, to see Kenya rise to greater heights, to see Kenya on the world map simply because of our food product production. We are not ready to die. And if you're ready to die, die alone and not to the rest of Kenyans. Kenyans, Think twice. The deal is too good for us, and we are not ready to perish. I am ready to see my lineage to the end of it. And I believe that none of you here is working to live for 20 years. Each and every one of us here in school, and both our judges here, are working hard and working smart to see their next 100 years so nice. I don't want my 100 years to be reduced to 30 years simply because of consumption of genetically modified foods. Reason with me, and just as Mayovsky said, the home of the Soviet people shall be a home of reason. Let the home of the Kenyan people be a home of reason, and let reason prevail. Thank you. I'm Kamau Catherine, the great Metke Girls High School. Kip Sigak, uh, with, and with Collins. Collins, you are a good debater, you are confident, and you had good points. That's very good. We go to Amon. Uh, first, you started in a way that seemed to be a bit offending. Next time, it's, it's a friendly thing. So talk, just say, I didn't agree with you in a, nice, in a nicer way. You can always do it. Uh, you also talked uh, about uh, research. A research. You said a research has been done or a research by scientists, or instead of saying maybe just research by scientists, but still you're a good debater. We go to Washington, Washington you're a good debater, uh, but otherwise work on your coherence of, argue, on the, of the argument. Thank you. Metke girls, the first uh, opposer, you are the facts, and uh, there's a quotation that caught my attention, that GMO is a sweet word that uh, that quotes the poison. I just liked the quotations. Uh, Catherine, you are a very passionate debater. 
you gave us facts, you convinced us, and that is good. Uh, as for the last uh, opposer, that is Dorothy, you are the facts. All of you researched very well. I wish you all the best. Uh, the other school, I also wish you all the best. Kipsigak High School, the judges awarded you 65%. Please give them a round of applause. Metke Girls High School, the judges saw it fit to award you 70%. You are our winners for the debate. Now, congratulations to the two teams on stage. We'd like to thank our studio audience and our viewers back home. Keep the conversation going on social media. Hashtag GDC for SDGs. A big shout out to Safaricom Blaze. I've been your host, Austin Yumbok. Catch you next time.